No, not Life is Strange, get that out of your mind. So, we know what life is, right? Right? Actually, kinda. We don't have an exact definition of life, but at least we try to. In biology book, you find things like, if we search in the dictionary the word life, we would find definitions such as the quality that sets apart a living being from a non-living one. <laughs> However, we would not be sure in what exactly this quality consists of. Okay, this is not getting this is not getting good, right? Well, the quality of life appears as a result of incredibly complex interactions ordered between non-living molecules to end with this quote. So, you're talking about the quality of life is something that sets us apart from lifeless things, something that some things have and some things don't. I know it's redundant, but follow me, okay? To understand how weird life is, we may have to look to the origin. That is complicated as fuck, so hang in there. 1. The origin. Biologists usually use the tree of life to set inside these branches all life forms we know in three main domains. Bacteria, the domain of bacteria, archaea, the domain of other type of prokaryotic life, and eukarya, that includes all organisms composed by one or more eukaryotic cells. The tree of life represents a little bit how life began on Earth, studied by prokaryotic life forms that interacted with one another to form the cells that compose us today, eukaryotic cells. So, what happened before prokaryotes? Was there any life before that? It's kind of complicated to answer this question, because we basically don't know how life itself organized on Earth. But we have theories, and Oparin created the most popular one, the primitive soup and protocells. The idea was that life was basically the result of a boiling pot of water, a toxic atmosphere, volcanoes exploding, and lightning striking all the time. And Tara, you have proteins, then RNA, one of the most popular theories to this day is that before life as we know it, there was self-replicating RNA. Along RNA, other organic molecules like amino acids and DNA also appeared. Short story short, these elements somehow combined together so precisely that a weird structure appeared. A super dumb thing that depended entirely on its environment for pretty much everything. But either way, it survived. And so now you have to go to school and university, pay taxes and get a job to it. So that's the origin? Well, turns out that some scientists thought that viruses were the first structure and then somehow they evolved to a protocell. At first this theory was thrown out of the window and forgotten cause, come on silly, viruses need a cell to reproduce. How are they gonna reproduce if cells don't exist? Dummy. Well. In serious business now, if viruses appear after or before protocells, are they alive? Sure answer is no, with a big, big asterisk. It's pretty much a scientific consensus that they aren't, so it's irrelevant really to pinpoint the origin of life in the past with a virus basis. Life starts with the basic form of life, a cell. But this raises another question. What the hell makes the virus not alive and the cells alive? It's basically because they lack one characteristic of living beings, development or growth. 2. Characteristics Biologists lost their sleep trying to define life, and for a long time the discourse was trying to find that one characteristic that sets apart life from non-life. But nature is a bitch and doesn't want us to discover things and simplify the world so our little monkey brains can understand it. When the DNA helical structure was discovered first by Rosalind Franklin and then confirmed by Watson and Crick, Crick said that life is DNA. Kinda like DNA is the secret of life. Okay, so maybe a life thinks need to have a genetic program based on DNA? Well, yeah, but viruses are alive then? According to this definition, yeah, some are, but also organites such as mitochondria and chloroplasts have DNA inside and so are alive inside a cell? Well, no, though maybe all living beings reproduce by themselves through the use of DNA, but still not very useful as mitochondria reproduce themselves inside the cells and aren't alive, or at least not considered alive. Okay, so maybe DNA isn't that one only characteristic. 
maybe life's complex? Probably, but wait, there are a lot of complex structures that are exactly life. And where do we set the limit of complexity? Maybe let's put a hierarchy of complexity. We start by atoms and then go up to molecules, organites, cells, tissues, organs, systems, individuals or organisms, populations, etc. etc. We start by the cell, the minimal structure of life, but still, what makes that cell alive? The ability to transform the matter of the environment in energy? I mean, all living beings should be able to do chemical processes to maintain life, so we can recreate these processes in laboratory. Does that mean that our SA tube suddenly is alive? Well, obviously, no. no. Some people try to solve this paradox by saying that it's actually metabolism, the whole package of chemical reactions inside the organism. But this definition is kinda circular, cause for all living beings to have metabolism, it has to be a living being. And so, it has metabolism. Yeah, it's complicated, cause metabolism itself is defined as the whole of chemical reactions in an organism. We cannot say it's the whole of chemical reactions or whatever. Cause it's not. It's the whole of chemical reactions that happen in order to maintain a living being alive. Get it? Or maybe it isn't metabolism, it's homeostasis. The equilibrium stage inside an organism that favors the chemical reactions of metabolism. But still, metabolism is part of homeostasis, and homeostasis makes metabolism happen. And we enter the cycle again. Maybe all living beings grow. Yeah, all living beings do that, they suffer an increase of size during their life. However, not only alive things increase in size, come on, even a rock can increase in size. This is where viruses are thrown out of the window mostly, as they don't grow over their existence. They just burst out of their hosts as a xenomorph and proceed to kill more cells. Such cuties. Okay, so maybe not metabolism. Interactions with the environment then? Yeah, why not? For being alive, you must interact with the external world in one form or another, but pretty much everything in our planet interacts with it. Biological, atmospheric, and basically all types of processes that force them to interact with the environment, like for example rocks that drop salt because water passes constantly, or water that melts because of heat. But maybe the difference in life is that it responds to stimuli that the environment gives. Yeah, makes sense, right? Well, maybe. So still, so, water is alive because when it's given a stimuli of heat, it melts? Yeah, I know, it's not the point, but let me simplify things. Maybe living things evolve then? Yeah, that makes sense. Evolution is the theory that unites all biology and also every single living being must evolve to the constantly changing environment. Yeah, true, but viruses themselves evolve. And they have genetic codes that randomly mutate and let them infect other living beings and create a global pandemic. Well, that was complicated. So now what? Well, all the things that I said, genetic code and reproduction, complexity, metabolism and homeostasis, growth, interactions with the environment and responses to stimuli and evolution, must be all the things that a living being should accomplish to be a living being. If only one of these characteristics is excluded, too bad for you, you are not alive. <laughs> but look at the bright side, you can't die, you can only be destroyed. <laughs> These whole sets of characteristics are the ones we call the properties of life, or characteristics of life. And well, this one are according to me mixing some things that I read in books, papers and the course of biology of my university, so take it with a grain of salt, as not even Google can decide whether there are 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 or 10 characteristics. So yeah, I decided to put 6 if you kind analyze, we can separate DNA and reproduction into two different characteristics, and same with metabolism and homeostasis, or you can join others like genetic code, reproduction and growth. Yeah, you know, create your own. But the point is that there should be complexity to the level of a cell or more, response to stimuli, homeostasis, conversion of energy and matter, growth, reproduction based on DNA, and evolution. 3. 
hope I made you understand. Confused yet? Well, I don't know how you feel honestly. <laughs> honestly, what you should get is that life is an addition of many characteristics and all should be accomplished so that you are alive. And that is kinda what makes life special. And weird that was not clickbait. Thanks for watching my dudes, go on and subscribe, comment, give it a thumbs up, etc, etc, etc. Love you, have a nice life from now on, peace out.